So now that we know the um, chemical nature of hormones and we have seen how the understanding of chemical nature can help us tell a lot about specific hormones. So I just want to introduce to you another concept which is very important and very fundamental when it comes to endocrine physiology and this is the concept of uh, feedback control of hormones. So this is an example of an endocrine gland and what happened with the endocrine gland it produces a hormone and um, continuous production of hormone you have increase in hormone levels within the blood eventually you have a hormone meeting up with the receptor to form a hormone receptor complex and then you have um, processes happening within the cell that we are going to discuss later but at the end of the day you have a product or the intended action so uh, a hormone is a messenger that is actually bringing a message into the cell for a certain action or a product to be produced okay so usually you have a physiological limit of this product or action you don't want it to be overdone you want it to be or to happen at a certain level that is acceptable so when this product or action uh, happens or a product is being produced it acts by what we call negative feedback to prevent the endocrine gland to keep on producing a hormone in order to prevent over activity so you have what we call a negative feedback control of production of hormone in order to prevent further action because you only need a certain level of action to happen once you have this this is a physiological um, level of that particular action that you want so when this happens it acts by negative feedback mechanism and then it prevents further production of hormone in such a way that you don't have a hormone receptor interaction and no more product or no more action is happening so this is a common way uh, through which hormones are being regulated um, what you want is to regulate biological action within an acceptable physiological limit you don't want something to over happen you don't want to have some kind of over activity or over response you want a response that is required so the negative feedback control of hormones can happen at different levels it can actually happen at the level of synthesis of hormone meaning that this product or action will prevent synthesis of hormone so that you don't have uh, more hormone coming into the circulation and bringing about uh, action or a product but also the negative feedback uh, control can also act at the level of storage of a hormone the negative feedback control of hormone can also act at the level of release meaning that it uh, act by preventing the release of a hormone in such a way that you don't have overactivity so this is a very very common way um, in which hormones are being regulated so that you don't end up having overactivity you just have um, the required uh, level of activity that was actually um, meant to happen so again with the feedback control um, take a look at this diagram um, these are uh, uh, graphs showing uh, changes in levels of hormone in menstruation you know when when we have what is called the menstrual cycle the menstrual cycle is one of the biological uh, phenomena whereby you have changes in levels of different hormones so you have a lot of hormones playing a part uh, or playing a role when it comes to you know the menstrual cycle and they usually changes their levels uh, at different uh, parts or uh, at different stages of the menstrual cycle so you have this blue graph here what you can see this is stradio so this is estrogen um, and you do have this green line here or the green graph and this is luteinizing hormone so what you can see from here you have an increase in the level of estradiol or increase in the level of estrogen okay the blue line and just after the maximum level of estrogen you see there's a surge of luteinizing hormone we call this a surge because it's a rapid increase in the level of luteinizing hormone so what we are seeing here is increase 
um, in the level of estrogen hormone has actually brought about a surge in luteinizing hormone levels so a rapid increase in luteinizing hormone levels what has happened is production of estrogen has actually stimulated the anterior pituitary to produce a lot of luteinizing hormone so a biological phenomena whereby you have a hormone increasing in its level and in so doing it increases the production or it increases the level of another hormone in blood it is called a positive feedback so basically you have increasing level of hormone increasing the level of another hormone or increasing level of hormone incre uh, also increasing the level of a certain action so this is called a positive feedback mechanism and a very good example of positive feed me feedback mechanism is what happened uh, during the menstrual cycle this is a typical example and um, uh, you have estrogen levels increasing stimulating the anterior pituitary to produce high levels of luteinizing hormone again this luteinizing hormone will act by positive feedback to increase uh, to stimulate the ovaries to produce more estrogen and it will continue like that until a point whereby the make, make uh, the negative uh, feedback mechanism it comes into play so this is an example of a positive feedback mechanism again um, the positive feedback mechanism as it apply for the negative feedback mechanism uh, happen at different levels of hormone um, uh, production and release so you have at the level of synthesis of hormone you have at the level of storage of hormone and at the level of release of hormone the same as what we have seen with the negative feedback um, uh, control